the night journey. One calm night in Mecca, one year before the migration to Medina, the roof of the Prophet Muhammad's house was opened while he was sleeping and the noble angel Gabriel came towards him. He opened his chest, removed his heart and washed it with Zamzam water. He then brought a vessel made of gold containing wisdom and faith. He emptied the vessel into the noble chest of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and then closed it up. Gabriel woke the Prophet, peace be upon him, and took him by his hand to the gate of the sacred Kaaba. There the Prophet, peace be upon him, saw a white creature, smaller than a mule, larger than a donkey, with wings on each side of its hind legs. The Prophet, peace be upon him, mounted the creature, and they took off north to Beit al-Maqdis in Jerusalem. This part of the journey is referred to as al-Isra. After dismounting the creature, the Prophet, peace be upon him, entered Al-Aqsa Mosque and prayed two units. He then saw the Prophets Moses, Jesus and Abraham, peace be upon them all, and was instructed to lead them in prayer. Next, Muhammad, peace be upon him, mounted the creature again and set off, shooting out of the solar system into the heavens. This ascension is known as al Miraj. Gabriel led the Prophet, peace be upon him, to the Lot Tree. At this point of the Prophet's journey, Allah spoke to him directly and revealed to him the last verses of Al-Baqarah. It is during this miraculous journey that Allah made the daily prayers compulsory. Initially, 50 daily prayers for the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his followers. After the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, received these instructions from Allah, he came down until he passed by Moses, who asked about the acts of worship Allah had prescribed for him. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, informed him about the fifty prayers, Moses said, Your people will not be able to perform fifty prayers each day. I tried the people before you. I had to deal with the children of Israel, and it was very difficult for me. Go back to your Lord and ask him to reduce the burden on your people. The Prophet, peace be upon him, did so, and Allah reduced it by ten. But when he came by Moses again, he suggested that he return and request a further reduction for the same reason, so he returned. Muhammad, peace be upon him, continued to go back and forth between his Lord and Moses until Allah said, There will be five prayers every day, each being rewarded as ten, thus making it equivalent to 50 daily prayers. The Prophet, peace be upon him, passed by Moses once more and informed him of the five daily prayers. Moses repeated that he should go back again. However, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, I have asked my Lord till I am too shy to face him. I accept this and submit to him. On this journey, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was taken to paradise where he saw dwellings made of pearls and their soils made of musk. He was also taken to hell where Allah revealed to him scenes from the future. He saw people receiving terrible punishments for different sins. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then returned home to find his bed still warm. ما كذب الفؤاد ما راى افتمارونه على ما يرى 
ولقد رآه نزلة أخرى عند سدرة المنتهى عندها جنة المأوى إذ يغشى السدرة ما يغشى ما زاغ البصر وما طغى لقد رأى من آيات ربه الكبرى Till this day, over 1400 years later, over 1.6 billion people all around the world perform these five daily prayers as revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by his Lord. Since that revelation and with the spread of Islam, this prayer is performed in many countries outside of Arabia, with approximately 400 million in Africa, 10 million in the Americas, over 60 million in China, half a million in Australia, 700 million in Southeast Asia, 60 million in Europe, and wherever else Muslims may be, they respond to this call to prayer. In this film, through authentically recorded sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his companions, we will describe the manner in which the Prophet, peace be upon him, prayed as he instructed us to, when he said, Pray as you have seen me pray. Hygiene in Islam. In Allah, you have put the word in a way you have put the The Prophet, peace be upon him, said that cleanliness is one half of faith. General hygiene. Fingernails and toenails should be clipped. Pubic hair and armpits should be shaved at least once every 40 days. A moustache should be closely trimmed clear of the mouth. After one uses the toilet, the private parts should be cleaned free of filth, using water if available. Any traces of filth must be washed from the body and clothes before prayer. If one is going to pray with his or her shoes on, they should check and remove any trace of filth from beneath them before they pray in them. One should smell pleasant and generally keep a neat and tidy appearance. It is reported that when Al-Hassan, the son of Ali, prayed, he would wear his best clothes. When he was asked about this, he said, Verily, Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty, so I beautify myself for my Lord. One of the three things Muhammad, peace be upon him, loved was perfume. Wudu ablution. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu idha qumtum ila salati faghsilu juhakum wa aydiyakum ila almarafiq فاغسلوا وجوهكم وأيديكم إلى المرافق وامسحوا برؤوسكم وأرجلكم إلى الكعبين. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Allah does not accept the prayer of one who has nullified his ablution until he performs it again. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The key to paradise is prayer, and the key to prayer is cleanliness, ablution. Intention The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The reward of deeds depends upon the intention, and a person will get the reward according to what he has intended. The intention here means that one must have cleared their heart and mind and focused purely on perfecting the ablution in order to please their Lord. Saying Bismillah in the name of Allah. Before beginning the ablution, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would say, 
in the name of Allah. Bismillah. Washing the hands. Muhammad, peace be upon him, poured water on his hands and washed them three times, rinsing the mouth. He then rinsed his mouth three times, rinsing the nose. Then he sniffed water into his nostrils using his right hand and blew out using his left hand three times. Washing the face. He then washed his face three times. Washing the beard. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would run his fingers through his beard, washing the forearms. Then he took a handful of water and washed his right forearm and again took another handful of water and washed his left forearm. Wiping the head. Then he wiped his head and entered his two index fingers into his ears and wiped the backs of his ears with his thumbs, washing the feet. And he washed his feet up to the ankles three times. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, made ablution, he would enter the water between his toes with his little finger. Supplication. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, If one completes and perfects the ablution, and then says, I testify that there is no God except Allah, the one who has no partner, and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger, the eight gates of paradise will be opened for him, and he may enter through any gate he wishes. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Summary: Make an intention and say Bismillah. Wash the hands. Rinse the mouth. Rinse the nose. Wash the face. Wash the beard, wash the forearms, wipe the head, and wash the feet. General points about ablution. Water usage. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to perform a complete ablution with just two handfuls of water. Brushing the teeth. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, if I had not found it hard for my followers or the people, I would have ordered them to clean their teeth with siwak, the Muslim toothbrush, for every prayer. Beginning with the right. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, loved to begin with his right side while cleaning or purifying himself. Washing each part. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, performed ablution washing each part once, twice or three times, except the head, which he only wiped once. Tayammum, dry ablution. 
فامسحوا بوجوهكم وأيديكم إن الله كان عفوا غفورا Make an intention, saying Bismillah. Strike the palms of the hands once on clean earth, such as sand, or any clean surface on which dust has collected. Blow off the excess. Wipe each hand up to the wrist. Wipe the face. What nullifies ablution? After one uses the toilet, touching the private parts, loss of consciousness, deep sleep, passing wind. When bathing is required, performing gusel. After sexual intercourse, after having a wet dream, after menstruation, period after postnatal bleeding. Performing kusul bathing. Make an intention, saying Bismillah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, washed both hands three times. He would then pour water from his right hand to his left hand and wash his private parts. Next, he performed a complete ablution. Then he took some water and put his fingers to the roots of his hair to the extent that he sees that the skin is wet. Then he poured water over his head three times and then over the rest of his body. Importance of Prayer In The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, If a person had a stream outside his door and he bathed in it five times a day, would they have any filth left on them? The people said, No filth would remain on them whatsoever. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then said, that is like the five daily prayers. Allah wipes away the sins by them. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Between a person and disbelief is leaving the prayer. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The comparison of the one who remembers Allah to the one who does not remember Allah is like that of the living and the dead. Place of Prayer the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The earth has been made for me and for my followers a place for praying. Forbidden Places of Prayer The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, prohibited prayer in seven places. Dunghills, slaughterhouses, graveyards, in the middle of roads, bathhouses, the roof, of the Kaaba and places where camels drink and rest. Covering the Ara, proper dress. For the men, just above the navel, 
to just below the knees. The shoulders must be covered. The clothes must be loose. The clothes must not be transparent. For the women, all her body except her face and hands. The clothes must be loose. The clothes must not be transparent. Facing the Qibla, direction of prayer. وَمِنْ حَيْثُ خَرَجْتَ فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَحَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُمْ فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطْرَهُ وَإِنَّهُ لَلْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ When the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, stood for prayer, he would face the Kaaba. Times for prayer. Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawquta. Fajr prayer. Morning prayer. The time of the morning prayer is from the appearance of the dawn until the time of sunrise. Forbidden time. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, There is no prayer after the morning prayer until the sun has completely risen. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, There is no prayer when the sun is at its meridian until it moves slightly to the west. Duhr prayer. Noon prayer. The noon prayer begins when the sun passes its meridian and it continues until an object's shadow is approximately the same length as itself. Asr prayer, afternoon prayer. This prayer begins in the afternoon when the shadow of an object is the same length as itself and continues until the sun sets. Forbidden time. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Pray the afternoon prayer, then abstain from praying until the sun sets. Maghrib prayer, sunset prayer. The time for the sunset prayer begins with the disappearance of the sun and lasts until the red twilight ends. Isha prayer, night prayer. This prayer begins when the red twilight disappears and continues up to half of the night. The only time one is allowed to pray in the forbidden times is to make up an obligatory prayer that was missed. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said that one of the three most beloved actions to Allah is performing the prayers on time. Placing a sutra, barrier or screen. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, When one of you prays, he should pray towards his sutra, and he should be close to it. The Prophet, peace be upon him, would stand the distance of three cubits, 1.37 meters, between himself and the wall or sutra. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to pray towards a column in the mosque, a bed Aisha was lying on, his riding animal, his saddle, a spear, a tree, and so on. The prohibition of passing in front of a person while they are praying. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, If one only knew the sin of passing in front of one who is praying, they would wait forty days, weeks, or years, then pass in front of them. Performing two units of prayer. Two rak'at. Intention. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The reward of deeds depends upon the intention, and a person will get the reward according to what he has intended. The intention here means that one must be aware in their mind which prayer they are praying. One must clear their mind from anything not related to the prayer and be aware that this could be their last prayer and so try their best to perfect it.
The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, advised, When you stand up to pray, perform your prayer as if it were your last. Takbir, saying Allah is the greatest. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The key to prayer is purification, and it is entered by saying the takbir. The Prophet, peace be upon him, would raise his hands with his fingers slightly spread apart, level with his shoulders, while saying the takbir. Allahu Akbar Meaning, Allah is the greatest. Placing the hands the Prophet, peace be upon him, would place his right arm over his left arm on his chest and just above the elbow. Standing before Allah. <laughs> When the Prophet, peace be upon him, performed prayer, his eyesight did not leave the place of prostration, and he forbade us from looking up at the sky or looking around in prayer. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, It is not proper to have anything in the house which disturbs one who is praying. Recitation The Prophet, peace be upon him, would first seek refuge with Allah from the accursed Satan, saying, A'udhu billahi minash rajim I seek refuge with Allah from the accursed Satan. The Prophet, peace be upon him, would then recite, In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Prayer is not accepted if one does not recite the first chapter of the Quran. Chapter 1, the opening. Surah Al-Fatiha Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين. All praises and thanks are to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment. You alone we worship, and you alone we ask for help. Guide us to the straight way, the way of those whom you have blessed, and not the way of those who earned your anger, nor of those who went astray. Amen. The Excellence of Reciting at the Opening The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has said that Allah, the Blessed and Exalted, said, I have divided the prayer between myself and my servant into two halves, and my servant shall have what he has asked for. When the servant says, Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, Allah says, My servant has praised me. The servant says, The most gracious, the most merciful. Allah says, My servant has highly praised me. The servant says, The master of the day of judgment. Allah says, My servant has glorified me. The servant says, You alone we worship, and you alone we ask for help. Allah says, This is between me and my servant, and my servant shall have what he has asked for. The servant says, Guide us to the straight way, the way of those whom you have blessed, and not the way of those who earned your anger, nor of those who went astray. Allah says, all these are for my servant, 
and my servant shall have what he has asked for. The Prophet, peace be upon him, would then recite another chapter from the Quran. Chapter 112 The Purity Surah Al Ikhlas Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad Allahu Samad Lam Yalid Walam Yulad Walam Yakul Lahu Kufuan Ahad In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Say, O Muhammad, he is Allah, the one, Allah, the self-sufficient. He does not produce a child, and he was not born of anyone, and there is no one equal to him. Manner of Recitation The Prophet, peace be upon him, would recite the Quran in slow, measured, rhythmic tones as Allah had instructed him, not racing or hurrying, but rather in his recitation he would clearly distinguish each letter. He would also pause at the end of each verse. The Ruku, Bowing After completing his recitation, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would pause for a moment, then raise his hands, saying the Takbir, as it was done at the beginning of the prayer, and then bow. Allahu Akbar meaning Allah is the greatest. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, bowed in prayer, he kept his back level, such that if water was poured on it, the water would not run off. The Prophet, peace be upon him, would not let his head hang down, nor would he raise it. The Prophet, peace be upon him, would place his hands firmly on his knees, as though he were grasping them, with his fingers spaced out. Supplication in the bowing position. In the bowing position, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would say three times, Subhana Rabbi al Azim. Subhana Rabbi al Azim. Subhana Rabbi al Azim. Meaning, How perfect is my Lord, the Supreme. Straightening up from the bowing position. Muhammad, peace be upon him, would then straighten up his back from the bowing position while raising his hands and saying, Sami Allahu liman hamidah. Meaning, Allah listens to one who praises him. In the standing position, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would then say, Rabbana walakal hamd meaning, O Lord, and to you be all praise. Sajda, prostration. Muhammad, peace be upon him, would then say the takbir and go down in prostration. Allahu Akbar. During prostration, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would prostrate on seven parts of his body, his forehead and the tip of his nose, both hands level with the ears, pointing towards the Qibla, with the arms away from his sides, both knees, both feet with the bottom of the toes pointing towards the Qibla, keeping the heels together. Supplication in the prostrating position. In prostration, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would say three times, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la Subhana Rabbi al-A'la Subhana Rabbi al-A'la Meaning, How perfect is my Lord, the Most High. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The nearest a servant comes to his Lord is during prostration, so make supplication in this position. Rising from the prostration, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would then raise his head from the prostration while saying the takbir. Allahu Akbar. Jalsa, the sitting position. In the sitting position, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would sit on his left thigh and foot, with his right foot upright, pointing his toes towards the Qibla. 
Supplication in the sitting position. In the sitting position, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would say, My Lord, forgive me, my Lord, forgive me. Muhammad, peace be upon him, would again say the takbir and prostrate a second time. Allahu Akbar meaning Allah is the greatest. In prostration, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would say three times, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la Subhana Rabbi al-A'la Subhana Rabbi al-A'la How perfect is my Lord, the Most High. The Prophet, peace be upon him, would then say the takbir while raising his head from the prostration and stand for the second unit of prayer. When rising for the second unit, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would sit for a short while, then get up supporting himself on the ground with his clenched fists. At times the Prophet, peace be upon him, got up without sitting. Allahu Akbar Second unit of prayer Second rak'ah the Prophet, peace be upon him, would again recite Al-Fatiha as he would in every unit of prayer, beginning with, In the name of Allah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, would then recite another chapter from the Quran. Chapter 114, Mankind Surah An-Nas Bismillahirrahmanirrahim قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ الَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ من الجنة والناس. Say, O oh Muhammad, I seek refuge in the Lord of mankind, the King of mankind, the God of mankind, from the evil of the sneaking whisperer, who whispers in the hearts of mankind, from among jinns or mankind. The Ruku, bowing. Allahu Akbar. Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim How perfect is my Lord, the Supreme. Sami'allahu liman hamidah Allah listens to one who praises him. Rabbana walaka alhamd Our Lord, and to you be all praise. Sajda, prostration. Allahu Akbar. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. How perfect is my Lord, the Most High. Allahu Akbar. Rabbi Ghafir Li. My Lord, forgive me. My Lord, forgive me. Allahu Akbar. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. How perfect is my Lord, the Most High. Allahu Akbar. The Tashahud. In the Tashahud, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would place his left palm on his left knee, clench all the fingers of his right hand, point with his index finger towards the Qibla, and fix his sight on it. In this position, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would say, لله والصلوات والطيبات السلام عليك أيها النبي 
ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله All compliments, prayers and good things are due to Allah. Peace be on you, O Prophet, and Allah's mercy and blessings be on you too. Peace be on us and on the righteous slaves of Allah. I testify that none has a right to be worshipped but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. <laughs> Sending prayers on the Prophet. Next, Muhammad, peace be upon him, would send prayers on the Prophet, saying, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إِنَّكَ حَمِيدٌ مَجِيدٌ O oh Allah, send grace and honour on Muhammad and on the family of Muhammad, just as you sent grace and honour on Abraham and on the family of Abraham. Indeed, you are worthy of praise, full of glory. O oh Allah, send your blessings on Muhammad and on the family of Muhammad just as you sent your blessings on Abraham and on the family of Abraham. Indeed, you are worthy of praise, full of glory. The Taslim Salutation of Peace The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The key to prayer is purification, and it is entered by saying the takbir and exited by the Taslim. The Prophet, peace be upon him, would then salute to the right and to the left, such that the whiteness of his cheek was visible while saying, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Peace be on you and the mercy of Allah. The Five Daily Prayers Morning Prayer, Two Units Noon prayer, four units. Afternoon prayer, four units. Sunset prayer, three units. Night prayer, four units. Performing three units of prayer. Three rak'at. Make your intention. Allahu Akbar. Recite the first chapter of the Qur'an, the opening. Surah Al-Fatiha Then recite any other chapter from the Qur'an. Allahu Akbar Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا ولك الحمد الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى الله أكبر رب اغفر لي رب اغفر لي Allahu Akbar Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la Allahu Akbar 
Then stand for the second unit of prayer. Second rak'ah. Recite the first chapter of the Quran, the opening. Surah Al-Fatiha. Then recite any other chapter from the Quran. Allahu Akbar. Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim. Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim. Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim. Sami'a Allahu liman hamidah. Rabbana walaka alhamd. Allahu Akbar. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Allahu Akbar. رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّيَ الْأَعْلَى سُبْحَانَ رَبِّيَ الْأَعْلَى سُبْحَانَ رَبِّيَ الْأَعْلَى اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ Now recite the Tashahud. Then stand for the third unit of prayer. Allahu Akbar. Only recite the first chapter of the Quran, the opening. Surah Al-Fatiha. Allahu Akbar. Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim. Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim. Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim. Sami'a Allahu liman hamidah. ربنا ولك الحمد الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى الله أكبر رب اغفر لي رب اغفر لي الله أكبر Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la Allahu Akbar Now recite the Tashahud Then recite the prayers on the Prophet Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. Performing four units of prayer. Four rak'at. Make your intention. الله أكبر. Recite the first chapter of the Quran, the opening. سورة الفاتحة. Then recite any other chapter from the Quran. Allahu Akbar. Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. Sami Allahu Liman Hamidah. Rabbana Walaka Al Hamd. Allahu Akbar. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Allahu Akbar. Rabbi Ghafir Li. Rabbi Ghafir Li. Allahu Akbar. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Allahu Akbar. Then stand for the second unit of prayer. Recite the first chapter of the Quran, the opening. Surah Al-Fatiha. Then recite any other chapter from the Quran. Allahu Akbar. سبحان ربي العظيم سبحان ربي العظيم سبحان ربي العظيم 
سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا ولك الحمد الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى الله أكبر رب اغفر لي رب اغفر لي الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى الله أكبر Now recite the Tashahud Then stand for the third unit of prayer Allahu Akbar As he stood, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would raise his hands Only recite the first chapter of the Quran, the opening. Surah Al-Fatiha Allahu Akbar Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim Sami'a Allahu liman hamidah ربنا ولك الحمد الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى الله أكبر رب اغفر لي رب اغفر لي الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى الله أكبر Then stand for the fourth unit of prayer Only recite the first chapter of the Quran The opening سورة الفاتحة الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم سبحان ربي العظيم سبحان ربي العظيم سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا ولك الحمد الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى الله أكبر رب اغفر لي رب اغفر لي الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى Allahu Akbar Now recite the Tashahud Then recite the prayers on the Prophet Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah General points about prayer One must not hurry or rush through the prayer. One must feel at ease in the standing, bowing, prostrating, and sitting positions. One must avoid yawning during prayer. One must pray only to please Allah and not to please others. One may sit down and pray if one is physically unable to do so while standing. One may lie down and pray if one is physically unable to do so while sitting. What is allowed during prayer? Turning to look to the side for some urgent need. Killing a harmful insect or animal. Taking a few steps due to necessity. Carrying or holding a child. Praising Allah when one sneezes. What is not allowed during prayer? Purposely eating or drinking. Purposely speaking about something not related to the prayer. 
leaving out parts of the prayer without a valid reason. Laughing during prayer. The first act that one will be accountable for on the day of judgment will be one's prayers. If one's prayers were good, then the rest of one's acts will be good. And if one's prayers were bad, then the rest of one's acts will be bad. Medical Benefits of Prayer and Ablution Everything that Allah prescribes has a wisdom behind it. The medical world is continuously discovering amazing medical benefits from performing prayer and ablution. When a Muslim performs his five daily prayers, he is taking preventative measures against many diseases and illnesses of the body. Performing ablution has been scientifically proven to have many physical benefits. Washing the hands prevents the transmission of many contagious diseases. Washing the face recharges such organs as the intestines, stomach and bladder, as well as having a positive effect on the nervous and reproductive systems. Washing the mouth removes food particles that could cause teeth and gum problems. Washing the nostrils removes germs trapped inside so they do not reach the respiratory system. Washing the ear decreases high blood pressure and relieves tooth and throat pain, as well as removing any extra wax that could cause ear infection and general body imbalances. Repeated washing of the face invigorates facial skin cells and helps prevent early wrinkles. It also helps invigorate the ends of the blood vessels as well as the nerves and glands that are near the skin surface and therefore helps them perform their functions efficiently. The last step of ablution, washing the feet, helps prevent athlete's foot, a fungal problem of the feet. Ablution also helps prevent skin cancer as the areas washed during ablution are the parts of the body that are most prone to exposure to pollution, both internal and external. Ablution removes this pollution five times a day and therefore maintains a clean outer layer of the skin, which in turn assists cells underneath to function properly. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also encouraged performing ablution before going to bed. This same ritual is also encouraged by yoga experts who say that washing important motor and sensory organs such as the hands, arms, eyes, legs and mouth before sleep using cool water relaxes the body preparing it for a deep sleep. The different positions offered during prayer have many physical benefits. During prostration the extra blood flow to the brain has a positive effect on memory, vision, hearing, concentration and the psyche. Those who offer their prayers regularly have more willpower and have fewer incidences of headaches and psychological problems. The increased blood flow to the face drains the sinuses, decreasing the chance of inflammation of that area. Prostration also reduces the possibility of developing hernia or hemorrhoids. Moreover, prostration allows for the one-third of air retained in the lungs to escape, which the body is unable to exhale while standing upright or in any other position. In the unique position of prostration, the back and neck muscles are exercised and therefore both areas are strengthened. It is done 34 times a day, hence its amazing physical benefits. Bowing, prostrating and getting up all activate numerous muscles in the body, increasing physical well-being. Even the final sitting position has a soothing and calming effect both on the body and mind. Glory be to Allah, the creator of all that exists. Allah, 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 Allah. Allah, Allah, Allah
Come home.